the ending of Crooked Kingdom ruins me. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Nichelle and um, I'm entering a vlog today. Today, I'm going to be reading the Six of Crows duology. So Six of Crows and then Crooked Kingdom. I attempted to read this duology before the TV show came out and like right before the TV show came out, like in preparation for the television show and I couldn't get through it. I got through like a third of Six of Crows and then was just like so confused and I stopped reading it. There were just so many characters and I was having a hard time keeping track of everyone. So I figured if I watched the television show first, maybe like having a picture of what those people looked like would help me keep those things straight. And now like some time has passed and so I was like ready to dig in. I have already read the Shadow and Bone book by the same author who takes place in the same world. So I do have a general sense of the world. I only read the first Shadow and Bone book because it wasn't really my speed. But I do have a kind of a sense of the world. I like get who like the Grisha are and like the like what a fabricator is. You know, like the basics. I have like a basic gist of things. I also have now watched the series, so like I know kind of like the main cast of characters. Like I know who Kaz is, I know who Inej is, I know who Jasper is, you know, the main girlies. So we're gonna see if we have better results going in not so blind. Having like a little bit of a sense. There's a fly buzzing all over town, and that's what it wants to do. Um, but we'll see. There could be a chance that this video is like two minutes long because I could DNF this book again at the very beginning. But hope I'm hopeful because so many people love this book so much that I like want to love it. I want to like I'm n such a basic girly that everyone loves it. I'm going to assume that I'm going to love it. There's like very few cases where that is not true. I'm going to read it and see if I can love it like everyone else does. This is going to be a full spoilers, by the way. This is going to be like a spo full spoilers log of both Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. So if you haven't read those and you don't want to be spoiled... This is probably not the video for you. So Six of Crows follows this gang of children who live in Ketterdam. Ketterdam, it takes place in the same world as Shadow and Bone, but it takes place in like a different country. Ketterdam is like, it kind of gives me like urban London industrial revolution type, type of vibes. We're following kind of this crow. We've got Kaz Brecker's like the head of the teens, of this little gang of teens. He's not actually the head of the gang, we come to find out. Um, as we read the story, but he's the head of like this gaggle because this gaggle is going to be the like crew he puts together to to enact this crime. So we have Kaz Brecker, and then we have his like right hand lady who is Anej, and she is a like a a spider, I think. She's not actually a spider; she's a person, but she was as a child lived in like another country and was like human trafficked into slavery, and now works for Kaz, and she like crawls around and is like super sneaky and so she like collects secrets for Kaz. Um, so we have those two and then we have Jas Jesper um, and Jesper is like a sharpshooter and um, he's also like the gang you know has a lot of gambling operations and J Jasper is like crucial to those. And then we have Nina, and Nina is what is called the heart render. So she's a Grisha, so she has like magic powers, and she is able to like manipulate someone else's body, like their organs and things. So she can like kill people by just like whoop, whoop, this with her hands and it smushes their hearts. Um, but she can also like do other stuff. It's like essentially just like manipulation of like other people's bodies. And then we have Waylon. And Waylon is like our newest addition to the little crew when we start the novel because actually I don't even know if he's like there at the beginning. But he shows up pretty quickly and he is like the son of one of the most notorious like wealthy merchants in Ketterdam um but he has had like a falling out of some sorts with his father he's run away and now he's working with Kaz and then we meet uh the person who like really sold me on this series I was I've been in, I love Nina but I love Nina because of this next character we're gonna meet whose name is Matthias and we have Nina and Matthias are like a unit you need to think about them as like a cohesive unit. Um, they kind of all pair up, right? We have like Anej and Kaz and then later Jasper and Waylon will pair up and then Nina and Matthias and they're why I read this book. Are they enemies? It's not even enemies to lovers, it's enemies and lovers. And we like hear the story of how they come to be in this place but essentially Matthias is a witch hunter and like I said Nina is a Grisha so they're like natural enemies. Um, but they, before this book started, they had a tale, a story in which Nina was captured by Matthias and like trapped on the ship. And then when the ship crashed, only her and Matthias survived on this island and they survived on this island together. And after all of the time they spent on this like little island together, they fell in love, obviously. Um, and so they both hate each other. 
I mean, Nina loves Matthias, I think, a little bit more than Matthias likes Nina, but, um, <laughs> she also accidentally got him in prison. It's complicated, we learn more about it, but, like, they are my favorite aspect of this story. Because it is very, despite the fact that it, like, has a strong plot, I think it is very character run. Like, the characters are why people love this story. Anyway, so we've got this crew of six, the Six of Crows, and they are going to the ice prison. This ice prison is this, like, notorious prison that no one can break. It's like an unbreakable prison. It's like magical Alcatraz, but icy. And they have to go in to break this guy out. There's, like, a drug situation happening in which there's this, like, magic drug that gives Grisha the, like, superpowers. And so in order to get this guy out, they need to go and break into the ice prison and then break him out. So that's the plan. That's kind of where the first book takes us. And we learn more about these interpersonal relationships, blah, 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 blah. Hi. I want to do like a quick update on so far where we're at with Six of Crows. I am kind of getting into the story. I think it has helped me that I have already seen the TV show because there's, you're thrown a lot of characters very quickly. And since I've already seen the TV show, I, I like know who everyone is. Like I know who the main five, six people are. And so there's like a, you're not trying to deal with kind of figuring all of that out. And I was still kind of like on the fence though. I was still like, mm, maybe this is just not the book for me. But then we got to Nina and Matthias's chapter. We get Nina's chapter and then immediately followed by Matthias's chapter. And Matthias's chapter opens with like, I dream about her every night. I dream about Nina every single night. And on the good nights, I kill her. And on the bad nights, I kiss her. And I was like, sold, sold immediately. I do think Matthias dies. I do think Matthias dies in Crow Kingdom. I don't have a ton of spoilers for this book, but I do feel like that is a spoiler I have gotten. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. Um, which is a little upsetting because like truly all I want is for Matthias and Nina to be together forever. There are the so where am I in the plot? So we've rescued Matthias from the prison, and I think we've just like we've just like set out towards the prison. I am, how am I feeling otherwise? Kaz is annoying me a little bit. I feel like people really love Kaz, like the character Kaz. And Kaz Brecker is not a nice guy. Like he's like very, like morally gray. He, no, he's bad. And like I think he's like puts on a little bit of a front. Like we've already gotten that a little bit and we like know something happened with his brother. He's like, mm, so sad because my brother died. But he's like mean. And there's like this like Everyone is, like, obsessed with the, like, relationship between, um, Kaz and Inez. And I'm like, he's mean to her. I don't get it yet. Um, if Kaz was a woman, if this was a story about a woman, he gives kind of, like, Villanelle vibes. And I would be all about it. Um, but he's not. He's a guy. And I'm like, ew. Ew. You are too greedy. And this is not fun for me. But we'll see. I think I might come around to him. I could see it. Lee Bardu is like, look... If you peek, she's, like, giving you glimpses through, like, the cracks in his exterior to, like, his soft insides. I'm, like, willing to give him some time to, like, grow on me. But right now, I'm mostly invested in the Nina and Matthias storyline. So I did cry in Six of Crows. I cried. Matthias, at one point, uh, takes a vow. We thought he was going to betray her. And then he takes a vow, and he says to Nina, and he says, like, protecting you is the purpose of my life. And I cried tears, actual tears, cried, uh, streamed from my face. And I said, wow. Wow. I'm a fan of this book. The whole book feels like a magic trick. It, like, feels like Lee Bardo does, does such an excellent job of making you look in the wrong direction, where, like, we think the scheme is going this way. Cass has done, like, a trick. It feels very much like a lot of the schemes. If you've read Throne of Glass, Aelin always is scheming, and Cass pulls off some similar schemes, but I feel like they feel a little bit more, like, Aelin feels like less like a magic trick and more miraculous I feel like a lot of times you're like whoa and Kaz Kaz like really intentionally twists things in a way that like really very much feels like you're sitting in a like magic show and watching magic tricks and it is really fun um and then it ends with Inej kidnapped which is like a hard place to leave it and so obviously I jumped right into Cricket Kingdom and Cricket Kingdom is following them they're back in Ketterdam now and um Kaz essentially was like double crossed by the person who sent them on this mission to the ice prison. Um, now he comes back, tries to like, you know, get their money and 
gets like in exchange for the prisoner and the guy that ran the whole scheme was like working for someone else and it turns out he's actually a guy from like Kaz's past and so now Kaz is like gotta get revenge on this man and also he's kidnapped Anej because he has noticed that what Kaz's weakness is Anej because Anej and Kaz have a little like crush they have a little romance it's blossoming it's a baby will it bloom not in this book the, I read this mostly while I was on vacation and I didn't film because I was like with my family as I was like reading or like on a plane you know but I finished it like actually a week and a half ago and I've been trying to let this digest because the ending of Crooked Kingdom ruins me and I my feelings are like really really quite mixed and I don't think they should be like Miss Lee Bardugo I know you're a big fan of the channel um and you might be like uh upset that I didn't love them and it, the ending killed me. Okay. Then, zoom to the next book, Crooked Kingdom. Crooked Kingdom, they've rescued the guy from the prison. He's actually, like, a young boy. His dad was the one who, like, invented this drug, but he, he as a young boy now, is, like, all they've got left. And they've been, like, tricked by this other guy, whose name I can't remember. I can't remember anyone's name, so hopefully that doesn't bother you. Um... And so that's where we kind of start. And this book was a little less compelling to me in terms of plot, but we get a little bit more time with these characters and we're able to, the first book we were like learning why they are the way they are. And in this book, there's a lot of time focused on like how they can grow. Like this book was a lot about the character's growth. I felt in particular like Kaz's growth in this book was just like spectacular. I loved some of the conversations he had with Inej. Honestly, Jesper had some great like, conversations with Inej. We see some good growth from Jesper. He has a conversation with his dad, we learn about more about his past. Um, he has like a cute little romance with Waylon. Um, and then we also get Nina and Matthias just happy for this whole book. Like they're just like sweet and happy and in love with each other for the whole book. And maybe I should have known that that was bad news. Maybe I should have known better. So we get like, there, as there's another scheme. And everyone comes out on top. Kaz is, like, richer than Sin now. He, everyone is kind of, like, rich. They're given their money, and they're, like, sent on their ways. Except, like, right before. Right before the scheme ends. I'm not totally in this in order. Right before the scheme ends, um, like, Matthias has done his part, and he's supposed to, like, go back and meet everyone. And he meets one of the, the young boys that are from... I don't remember what they're called, but like his, like the witch hunter group that he's from. Um, and Nina and him have had a lot of conversations about like the inherent bias with, in witch hunters because even though he loves Nina, he still has this like really big tension between like um, loving Nina and also like feeling like there's something inherently evil about magic. And um, he's kind of like working through that through a lot of this book. And he also thinks that there's like a possibility that the that the Grisha that Nina's people wouldn't need to like wipe out the witch hunters but instead could Nina could work to with them with him to kind of like convert them there's like a cultish sort of aspect in being a witch hunter and he, there's like a real possibility in these people like unlearning the like inherent biases they have and um so they have plans for that and he meets one of these young boys and who's a witch hunter and he gets shot in the stomach oh my god um, by one of these young boys and he makes it back to the boat where Nina is waiting for him. <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm sure you have videos of me sobbing uh, during this part. <gasps> what the fuck, wait. I don't think anyone should read this book. <laughs> I'm canceling Crooked Kingdom. Crooked Kingdom canceled. For emotional distress. And Nina has po her powers were changed during uh, there was like a drug incident. I'm assuming you've read this book because otherwise my plot explanation is gonna make no sense to you. <laughs> this is a bad video, but her powers were like changed, and so she can no longer like heal people. Before she wasn't like a great healer, but the same powers that allowed her to kill people by like ripping their hearts open also allowed her to like redirect blood and like do some like essentially like emergency medicine and she now doesn't have those powers she has powers over like dead flesh and like bones which is like super cool but unhelpful when you're trying to keep your boyfriend alive and she can't save him and we like see Matthias talking about the promise he made to Nina and about how he'll keep her safe even in death he's gonna find a way to keep her safe I'm crying um 
it wrecked me. I, like I said, I was a Nina and Matthias girl, like, <laughs> oh, and the fact that Matthias died, rude. Rude. And so anyway, Nina, at the end of the book, Nina is, like, um, taking a boat to bury him in, like, his ancestral homeland. <laughs> so, um, he can be, like, returned to Earth and, like, participate in his culture's understanding of, like, the afterlife and death. And it's, like, gonna be very dangerous for Nina. And I guess apparently the, uh, there's a duology called, I'm, like, in tears. Oh, guys, Nina and Matthias wrecked me. <laughs> this may be one of the, like, hardest I've cried in a book this year. So Nina is going back to Matthias's homeland to bury Matthias there, as per his last wishes. Um, and then we get everyone else. Everyone else is having a great time. Nina is the only one. I mean, Matthias is also having, I mean, he seems fine. He's dead, so. But Nina is having, like, a rough time, and it fucking sucks. It's not fair. I, like, really, I, like, have some gripes. We'll come back to it. Okay. Anaj gets her boat. She's decided that she is going to take on all these slavers and work to, like, get rid of slavery. And Kaz does gift her a boat. He gifts her a boat. And he names it after her. And that was sweet. Kaz Brecker, you made me have won me over with that little present. Um, and Kaz is trying to figure out what he's trying to do because Inez has kind of explained to him that, like, the things he does as this gang owner are, like, not ethical. He's, like, preying on young men in the same way he was preyed upon and his brother was preyed upon when they were teens. And he's, like, starting to see that. We don't exactly know where he's going to go from here. Um, but we know he's, like, kind of turned over a new leaf. And we suspect that he's going to become, like, a little bit more morally motivated. So we've got those guys. They're doing that. Jesper um, has, he, over the course of the story, we found out Jasper was Grisha, and he's going back to his homeland with his dad to, like, learn things. Oh, and Waylon, Waylon, remember, he was the son of the wealthy merchant. The wealthy merchant was part of, like, the people that screwed these guys over. And part of the, like, scheme that Kaz ran was now Waylon, like, has access to his father's legacy, his, like, money, his inheritance, which he wasn't going to have initially because Waylon is dyslexic and he couldn't read. And his dad, like, disowned him because he couldn't read and was dyslexic. And but now he's going to, and Jesper's going to help him. He's going to help him read things because, honestly, it's really easy to hire someone to help you read things, but you need someone you trust. And Waylon and Jesper have, like, a slight little romance, and so they're going to work together. And it's going to be a great time. Anyway, Nina, I guess, apparently, shows up in the next book in King of Stars. There's, like, a two-book duology, I think, that follows Nina. I don't think it follows follows Nina. I don't know. I haven't read it. I don't know if I will read it. <laughs> We're going to talk about that. But, yeah, that's kind of where we end up. That is, like, my, like, super brief synopsis. I don't know if it was that brief. Of Six of Crows. What are my final thoughts? I think this book is excellent. I think this book is good. I think there is a big following for a reason. I think Leigh Bardugo created such interesting, vivid characters, and her plotting is exquisite. Like, the fact that the first book, and to some extent the second book as well, felt like a magic trick, is exquisite. The, like, character growth that we see these characters go on, the depth of their, like, family history that lead them to be the people they are today is gorgeous. Um, that ending, though. I, like, really struggled with that, because I really hated the ending. It was, like, 100% subjective. Like, it just it was, uh, I get, it was a bad time for me. Like, it wasn't, like, an inherently bad ending. I think it made cohesive sense with the rest of the narrative. I think it worked well for Matthias and, like, wrapping up his arc. The fact that he sacrificed himself um, with this, like, hope of, like, converting people and that he, like, got to kiss Nina goodbye and the fact that Nina is going to get to, like, carry on his legacy in a way. I think it makes sense. But... <laughs> man it like was very painful I like really struggled with it especially because it felt like everyone else kind of got like a happily ever after like everyone else all f like four of them got like a happy ending and two of them got like a shit sh like the shit end of the stick <laughs> um that just seemed really unfair and like Lee Bardugo was allowed to do that I just like always struggle when one character like really has a bad time in comparison to everyone else like I want everyone to suffer and no one to suffer <laughs> and that's not a fair criticism it isn't. Like, you're allowed to make the endings of your novels unfair. And I think, the f especially now that I know Nina's story continues, it, like, makes a lot of sense. But I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. It really made me upset. And I'm someone who likes an emotional ending. I don't mind an ending that makes me cry, that, like, tugs at my heartstrings. But, like, uh, I didn't like it. I think back to some of the character deaths we saw in, like, Throne of Glass, which is one of my favorite YA fantasy series. And, like, I think those, 
I felt really okay with. And I'm like trying to grapple with why I'm like so, and not like upset. Like if I saw Lee Bardugo and she was like, <laughs> she'll, let's talk it out about this ending. I wouldn't be like, you did a bad job. I would be like, that's a beautiful ending. I think it makes sense. I might ask her like, could you explain like why you chose to kill Matthias? Cause it seems really mean, but I wouldn't be like bad, you know? Um, and like, it made me like, how do I, had this in when I'm like rating it because it like really did detract from my experience of the book even though I don't think objectively or subjectively it is like unnecessary like it's a mark against it and so I like grappled that's why it took so long to film this like wrap up because I really wanted to come to a place where I like understood the ending and was like emotionally okay with the ending which like clearly I wasn't based on the fact that I was still crying when I talked about it here um but I think that also speaks to Lee Bardugo's like ability to write such complex and compelling characters like if she wasn't able to write characters that you fell in love with, I wouldn't have been so upset when one of them died. But the fact he died, really just like, I didn't like it. I wanted him to live. I like prefer happy ending. I like really read this book with Nina and Matthias at like the core. Like they were my centerpiece for my reading experience, even though they aren't necessarily the centerpiece for the story. And to see them like ripped apart. And I don't feel, I think again, I have since learned that Nina has like a spinoff in which we see her again. But I like really felt like Nina's story and her like grappling with Matthias's death wasn't at all fleshed out. She was like, bye, um, I'm gonna go bury him. <laughs> she wasn't, Lee did a better job than that. But um, that was hard and I think I think I appreciate a death more when I'm able to see a character kind of like deal with it. And then for me, it's not even the death of Matthias, it's more the grief of Nina. If we could pull those apart, that I'm really struggling with, that everyone else got a happy ending. Matthias is dead, so he's eliminated. And then Nina got this like devastating ending. Um, and that just like seems fair, unfair to her. And I also didn't feel like we got like a good conclusion. I felt a little unsatisfied in the conclusion of Nina because we didn't get to explore that grief in a way that I felt was like growing. Like I do think Nina experienced growth throughout the two novel duology, but like that, the moment of Matthias dying is just like such a fundamental, like there's no way that didn't fundamentally change who Nina was as a person. Like there's just no way. When you lose someone that close to you, like it fundamentally changes you. And I didn't feel like we got to explore that and I felt a little disappointed in that aspect, I think. I guess that's kind of where I'm coming to as I like talk through this. I was sad that Matthias died, but I think I was more disappointed by the fact that we didn't get to explore the way grief shaped Nina. And again, I haven't read, I didn't know that Nina was gonna be in future stories. And I don't know if I'll be continuing because like it really hurt my feelings that Matthias died. <laughs> I'm a sensitive girly sometimes, oftentimes. And um, it hurt my feelings. So I don't know if I will continue, definitely not soon. Maybe one day I'll feel strong enough to like find out what happened to Nina and like to see that growth explored because I love her I thought Nina was such a compelling character all of the characters were like incredibly compelling Lee Bardigo did a brilliant job I, like don't want my like gripes with the ending to take away from that I think the book is like incredibly brilliant I think it's well loved and well loved for a reason I'm excited to see um, it kind of continue to be tied into the shadow and bone world the way they've done on the Netflix show but yeah those are my final thoughts on Six of Crows I thought this was going to be like a more exciting vlog, but it ended a way that broke my little heart and I had to talk about it because it really shaped my takeaways from the novels. Anyway, that's all. Have a great one. Subscribe if you want. Sometimes I post videos. Not that often, apparently. I'm trying to get better. Next year, I have big hopes and dreams and plans. We'll see how they go. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Bye.